Hi, it's Rob from the Brush and Balcom. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to paint Clotticus, the Death Guard Plague Marine. So the first colour we're going to use is Citadel Mephist on Red. I'm going to be using this for some of the open wounds and the little areas around where the tentacles are coming out and that kind of thing. I'll also use this on the inside of the Nurglings mouths. There's one on the floor and one on the top of the Icon of Despair. He's got half a butt cheek missing too. Now we're going to move on to a little bit of Citadel Xerius Purple. I'm going to use this to do all of the tentacles on the miniature. There's quite a few little ones on this one. He's got some coming out of his stomach. He's got the little one on his sword blade, or on the hilt rather, and coming out of his backpack. Once you've managed to get all these tentacles done in the purple, you can move on to the next one. I've also done some of these tentacles green in the past, so obviously depending on what colour you want to do them. Once you've finished doing all those tentacles, we're going to move on to the Vallejo Modeler Rust. I'm going to use this to do the trim for his armour, part of the hilt of the sword, the little Nurgle icons, the bell, that kind of thing. Lots of the little details and things like that that you see across the model. I'm going to use Citadel Mournfang Brown. I'm going to use this to cover the base. Now, depending on what colour you're doing the base and what colour your Death Guard bases are, obviously you may be doing this a different colour. I have mine so that they are on... A lot of them are on Sector Mechanicus bases and things like that. And those that aren't have been putting them on sort of like the grey bases but very dirty or brown bases because there's some of the Sector Mechanicus ones that have got kind of that muddy effect in. So I've been painting those up in this colour. This should tie them all together. Now I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Bane Blade Brown. We're going to use this to do like the leather wrap around the Hycon of Despair. It's a very simple method of doing leather this using the Bane Blade Brown. Then we use Snake Bite Leather. And then you can actually give a highlight with Balor Brown. Not too much of a highlight, just enough to bring out a bit of colour on it. It does look pretty good like that. You can obviously go and do another highlight if you want to, but I keep it kind of down to two highlights on this guy because it just didn't want it too bright compared to the rest of them. I'm going to use Citadel Lead Belcher. I'm going to use this to do all of the silvery metallic parts. Looks like we're going to be doing some of them slightly off camera as well. But basically the blade of the sword, a lot of the shaft of the standard there, and the parts on the icon of despair at the top too. Also you'll be using this for the chainmail and the exhausts and stuff like that on the power pack. Now we have Citadel Kislev Flesh. I'm going to be using this to do the skin on his face. He's got quite a strange face. His nostrils are sort of by his forehead. He's got those almost, I don't know, like the... Look a bit kind of like alien eyes. So we're going to give him a bit of a funny look and a bit of a strange pallor. With his skin done, we're going to move on to the Leo Russian uniform World War II, which I've conveniently not shown here. But any kind of olive drab colour will do. I'm 
this was just going to paint the knee pads and the shoulder pads and also the loincloth he has down his front there I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Balor Brown. I'm going to use this to do the weird worm things that are coming up. When you're doing this, try and remember that there's one on the ground by his left foot, one between his feet, and some other little mouths coming out the ground behind him. And you've got the two going up the icon of despair, and one who clips into the front of the base, too. So I'm going to be doing this off camera. Next up, Citadel Rakarth Flesh. You can use this to do any of the bone spurs that are growing out of him. The teeth to the funny looking worm things. Any skulls that might be littering the ground around them as well, not too sure if there's any. She's got all the Rakarth flesh done. We are now going to move on to Citadel Nurgling Green and paint up the Nurgling here and also the face on the bit that's missing from the icon of the spur, which is on the floor by his feet. Also, be using this to do the skin on the Plague Bearer's face, which is poking out the right hand side of the icon of the spur as you're looking at it. See, sometimes when you're painting things, you might see the stuff that you've missed from a previous layer. Just add that to it once you're done. Now we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Pink Horror. I'm going to use this to paint the strange tube that's coming out of his mouth and disappearing into his chest armor just down the side of his neck there. got these little weird like worm-like tentacles coming out of his shoulder so I thought I'd do those pink as well. It's a hat tip to Wiggly Woo. Next up is Citadel Dawn Yellow. I'm going to use this to do all of the boils and the spots and pox which are on him. There's quite a few of these on the tentacles and on the tentacle on the blade of his sword or the hilt of his sword rather. A few different places on the Nurgling too. So once you've got all these with the Dawn Yellow, we can move on to the next one. So here I'm just looking for any little pox that I may have missed. There's a few I find later on, so you can go back and do them later, or if you've got them all, that's happy days. The first shade that we're going to use to get some of that detail on there is Citadel Seraphim Sepia. I'm going to use this to do all of the armour and all of the bone. You can see as soon as you start applying this, that it does bring out the detail so, so well. I'm also going to use this on the Russian uniform World War II, that olive green there. So you can use the sepia on the olive green too. Now I'm going to use Citadel Fugan Orange. I'm going to be using this Fugan Orange to paint up the Nurgling here, give him some shade. The reason that we are doing it in Fugan Orange rather than a green colour or another colour is that I can't help but think his face looks like Ludo from Never Ending Story. So he is going to be having this orange hue, which just gives him that little bit more Ludo look when you see him. So once you've got all the orange done, we're going to move on to Citadel Colia Green Shade. I'm going to use this to do these little worm things. If you haven't got this one, 
which is a shade which we've only recently picked up, I thought I'd give it a go. I think Drakenhof Nightshade or Athonian Camo Shade would work just as well. Because this seems to be kind of a mix between the two of them, so if you use either one of them, you should get pretty similar results, I would have thought. Now we are going to use a little bit of Citadel Snakebite Leather Contrast. This is wonderful stuff. Absolutely love this stuff. And all we're going to use this on is the areas that you put the Bane Blade Brown on. So that is the wraps that go around the Icon of Despair shaft there. And then also the holster is hip. As you see when you put that on and that dries, it really does give it a nice sort of old brown leathery look to it. So it's a really, really good shade, that one. Or really good contrast, I should say. Next up is Athonian Camo Shade. I'm going to use this to paint up the shading on the Plague Birder's face. Very quick layer, this one. Next, we are having Citadel Drachenhof Nightshade. I'm going to use this to paint his skin. Going for a bit of a strange fleshy tone on this one. I just thought the Drachenhof Nightshade would make it look a little bit odd. And when we build up those flesh layers again, the flesh tones, it should make it look a little bit hideous. So we're now going to use Citadel Druchy Violet. I'm going to use this on all of the tentacles and also the areas where the armor's split. So you're going to have that red bit that's on his shoulder. You're going to have the little bit around his mouth on his foot there. Obviously the wound on the back of the Nurgling as well. You can do that in this color or Carobird Crimson, either should work just fine. Now we're going to use Carobird Crimson. We're going to use that to paint this pink tube that's coming out of his mouth, and also the ones coming out of his shoulder. And we're using Carobird Crimson on the mouths of the little worm things. Also, there we go, and also the mouths on the Nurgling too. Now it's Citadel Null Oil, and we're going to dull down all of those lead belcher parts that we put on before. So if it's had lead belcher on it, you want to give it a coat of Null Oil. So just dull it down, give it a bit of a dirty, rough look to it. And also bring out the detail in all those sections. Next up, Citadel Agrax Earthshade. We're going to be using this on all the areas that we put the Vallejo Model Air Rust on. That's all the little icons and symbols and stuff like that. You can always do a section now that I do later on as well. I do the Agrax Earthshade shade on the base here. And I do that at the very, very end. So if you want to shade the base now, I'm going to be using Agrax Earthshade on that a little bit later on. It wasn't really by design, I just failed to shade it now. Next up, we're going to use some Balor Brown. We're going to start reapplying some colour. We're going to use this to apply colour back to the worms, which are going up the icon of despair there. Slightly off camera. There we go. Now I've got lots of small details on these, so I'm trying to paint them up, pick out those details just to make them look as revolting as possible. But like these little fleshy arms growing out the sides and they're all wrinkly and pretty disgusting looking. You can also use this on the leather now if you want to. Next up, we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Deepkin Flesh. We've mixed that with the Balor Brown and I'm now going to do some highlights on these worms. So when I'm highlighting these, I'm trying to do about the top half of the worms going down the side, and the highlights will slowly get higher and higher on them. That's because I wanted to leave some of the darker stuff, like the initial Balor Brown, and the darker shades 
on the underside of the worm where that curls around underneath that'll give you that kind of natural looking shade i'm going to add a bit more deep can flesh to it and we're going to highlight about two thirds of the area that we've just put the last highlight on We are just going to do the two highlight layers on these worms as well don't forget the chap who's not on the base here or the little worms that are coming out the ground as i have done here at a later point you'll notice that i've gone back and colored all those in because i completely failed to do the ones on the base as i was going through it so now i'm going to work on his skin we're going to start with citadel kislev flesh to reapply that color there i'm using a small layer brush here to reapply the color because i wanted to try and pick out as many details as possible on his face and to do the later highlights, I'll be using the Wargamer character brush from Army Painter. That's got a really good point and it allows you to pick out those details and get that really stuck in there. Now I'm going to add some Citadel Deepkin Flesh to highlight the Kislev flesh and I'll give that that slightly blue tint to it. I think it's a good way of making it look a little bit rotting, a little bit revolting. As you build up the layers with this it does look a bit odder and odder as it goes on which is a really nice look because he's got a really strange face this chap. Again it makes me wonder about whether when he gets up in the morning and he's trying to have his breakfast with that massive tube coming out of his mouth, whether he regrets going along with Nurgle after all. So we're gonna add a little bit more deepkin flesh to him again and just highlight those details. You can really see the detail on his face coming out now. Slightly out of focus there, but you can see the grain on the table quite nicely. So again, we're adding a little bit more deepkin flesh to this. I did do quite a lot of extra highlights on the skin here. As I say, it does bring out the detail. Really gives it a good look and makes it stand out from the rest of the model. Now we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Ushabti Bone mixed with Vallejo White and this is going to be for the armour colour. Now the mix I use for this is ever so slightly off-white. It does look quite bright on there but it does have that cream look to it. It's the one I tend to do for the Death Guard I've been doing or for the Pallid Hand. Whichever you want to call them. But it is that kind of creamy off-white colour that I've got here. So with that done, we're now going to use Citadel Zerius Purple and build up the layers on the tentacles. The main thing I find with these tentacles is they have a lot of almost like horizontal stripes on them, stripes going around the tentacle rather than lengthways. So you can try and pick those out with the Zerius Purple, it's a good start for when you start applying the Gene Stealer Purple now. And you can add that to kind of the top edges of it. So when you're doing these ones, the horizontal parts of it, you want to be using the Gene Stealer Purple down to about halfway down the bits that you've put the Zerius Purple on. So those horizontal lines will be a little bit thinner and at the top of the stripes. It's a case of just trying to work out where the light will be coming from if it's from above and highlighting those areas more. 
And we're going to use the pink horror just to put the final highlight on the tentacles. We're also going to use this to recolor the tentacles that are on the floor here too. And also the tube coming out of his mouth and the tentacles on his shoulder too. And this just brings all the detail out for the final ones and those big purple tentacles. And it is the starter layer for doing all the smaller ones. Now we're going to start working on the greens. We're going to use Vallejo Russian Uniform World War II once more. And again, just thinking about where the light's going to be catching it. I've only done the right-hand side of that knee pad there, because you have the tentacles going over where the ridge is down the front, so that would give that nice bit of shade. Then highlighting the shoulder pad, mainly doing it the front and the top. It's a little bit round the back, but you've got tentacles above it, and you've got the power pack as well, which would be creating a bit of shade on that shoulder as well. Now we've added a little bit of white to the Russian uniform World War II just to lighten that up and we are now doing highlights on the knees and shoulders. That does look quite bright when it goes on this but it does fade down It's because it's wet. It is catching the light a little bit. But it does dull down a little bit and give you that nice highlight on the shoulder pad and the knees and also on the loincloth too. There's lots of little bits of shoulder pad poking around that kind of bony growth coming out of his shoulder. We'll adding a little bit more white to the previous mix, we're going to do another highlight on the greens. As I say, there is lots of little bits where the armour has been punctured by that bony growth coming out of his shoulder. So it's worth trying to catch them with it as you're going round too. Now I'm going to use Citadel Rakarth Flesh. I'm going to reapply colour to the bony growth and the weird kind of roots, which I'm doing in a similar colour that are coming down across his chest. Also do this for the teeth on those little worm things, and the Plague Bearer and the Nurgling too. So quite a few bits to do with the Rakarth Flesh. As always, you want to make sure that you're leaving some of that Seraphim Sepia shade on all the parts that you're re-highlighting. I'm going to add a little bit of Citadel Ushabti Bone to the Rakar Flesh, and we are going to highlight this. Slightly washed out this, I couldn't get the camera to focus on it properly, not too sure why. So it's a little bit washed out when you're trying to work out where you're putting it, but if you think about where the light is going to be catching this from above, and then highlight those areas, that is what I'm going for here. I'm going to use pure Ushabti bone. I'm going to use this to do little highlights on the bony spurs and all the bits that we've been working on with the Rakarth flesh. And we're going to do a final one by adding some white to that. And just do a final little highlight on all of these parts. Like so. 
So now I'm going to go back to Balor Brown, and we are going to do the little highlights on the leather strapping on the staff and also on his pouch. That's the bit they said you could do earlier on while we were doing the little worm things. But if not, you can do it now. It's a very quick method again. A nice little highlight on there. It works quite well. It looks like it fits in perfectly with the Bane Blade Brown and the Snake Bite Leather. Now it's Nurgling Green. And we are going to apply this to the Nurgling. Get the colour back on there. We're also going to use it on the Nurgling's face on the disc on the floor as well. And also the Plague Bearer who's poking through that right hand part there. Now we're going to add a little bit of white to the Nurgling green and we are going to start highlighting all the skin of the Nurglings and the Plague Bearer. Like so. And once we finish this layer, we're going to add a little bit more white to the previous mix. I'm going to do another highlight on the Nurgling green skin. This time we're using the Army Painter Wargamer character brush and we are just picking out those little details on the various faces. You can see the front of that one, it really does look like Ludo. It's a great little miniature that. Now we're going to use some Citadel Agrax Earth Shade just to shade that base. Now this is what I was saying earlier on. If you want to shade it earlier and you did, then you can just ignore this bit and skip it again. Just kind of slapping that down and hoping we don't go over any of the details that we've already painted up. If you are, you can just pick out the details again. Or if you did it before we started painting anything up, then happy days. You can go about it in a slightly less picky way. Now we have Citadel Dawn Yellow. We are going to just make sure we've picked out all of those yellow pox and boils that are covering the tentacles and a few that are on those little maggots and the nurgling too. Now we're going to use some Vallejo Red Wash. I'm just going to use this to go around each of those boils and pox, just to give them that red and slightly inflamed look. It's not too dark, it's not too bright, I think it's just right for giving it that kind of sore and tender look. Also doing it around his nose, his mouth, and a little bit around his eyes too. Now we're going to use some Citadel Emperor's Children. We are going to just pick out the details on the tentacles on the ground here, on the ones on his shoulder, and the tube that's coming out of his mouth too. These are the ones that we did the pink horror on earlier on. We're just picking those details out and doing the final highlights for these. Like so. Now we're going to use some Citadel Mournfang Brown and we're just going to start working on the base. 
Now initially here I start working on the base using a small brush to try and pick out those details. And after a short while it became a little bit tiresome so I used a slightly wider brush, it's one of my old medium layer brushes, it's kind of flat with no point now. And I'm just gently dry brushing that Mornfang Brown back over the ground areas. Now I'm back on a thin brush to pick out the details for the sides of this little raise on the base. And it's on to the next layer. Next layer, we are adding a little bit of Citadel Squig Orange to the Mornfang Brown, and we're going to start adding a highlight to that. Now again, I'm using a thin brush here to pick out the details on this little ridge here. Then I'm going to use an old medium layer brush to dry brush this colour onto the flat of the base. Just get some of those areas highlighted, give it a bit more detail. So next up, we're going to use Vallejo White, and we are going to pick out the eye of the Plague Bearer and the two Nerglings. I'm doing the eyes on the Death Guard chap, Clothicus, black, as if they're kind of like alien eyes or something like that. Because that just seems to fit with his face. I don't think doing white eyes on there with the pupil would look as good. Now we are using some Vallejo Black. We're going to be using this to do the pupil on the Plague Bearer and the Nurgling. And also to colour in Clothicus's eyes. Once pasted and varnished, I'm going to give these a glossy coating. Just to give them that kind of moist, shiny look. Now we're going to be using some Vallejo German Grey. And also we're going to be using a little bit of Mechanica Standard Grey after this. And this is just to put the little crescent on the back of the eye lens. So we're going to start with a little bit of Vallejo German Grey, do a little crescent. Then use a little bit of Mechanica Standard Grey and put a little crescent at the back there too. And now we are going to use a little bit of Citadel Dawnstone just to put one final grey highlight on those eyes. Like so. And finally we're going to put one white spot for reflection on the front of each eye using Vallejo White. And then one very, very thin line at the back of the eye just on top of that Dawnstone. like so. Now we're going to use a little bit of Seraphim Sepia and we're going to dirty up that armour because he's looking entirely too clean right now. So I'm using a Army Painter Wargamer character brush here so you can get some nice thin runs. I'm just doing vertical runs down all of the armour plates. When I'm doing these runs I think about if he was stood upright with his arms by his sides and do the runs like that. The first load of runs out the way, we are going to come back with Citadel Agrax Earthshade and we are going to add runs on top of these, not quite so many. I'll probably say about half as many runs using Agrax Earthshade as you did with the Seraphim Sepia. And then finally, we're going to do the last set of runs using Citadel Nuln Oil. You're going to be doing about half the amount of runs as you did with the Agrax Shade. So just doing a few little runs on each area with the black just to give it that little bit of extra colour. Get the armour looking nice and corroded and so there's rust and grime and stuff leaking out of every joint.
with that done, we're now going to start working on rusting up his weapons and the Icon of Despair. So we're going to start with Citadel Seraphim Sepia. Going to use this to discolour all of the areas of Lead Belcher. Leave some of the Lead Belcher with just Null and Oil, and you want to think about where it's probably going to rust a bit more. And mainly put the Seraphim Sepia there, you don't want to cover the whole thing with Sepia. You can see once you start putting this colour on it, it does start to look as though it's a bit old and weathered. Now I'm going to do the same, but with Citadel Agrax Air Shade. Like you did with the runs, probably about half as much coverage with the Agrax Air Shade as you did with the Seraphim Sepia, but over the same areas. Just so you get that darker area where the rust is going to be mainly present. Like so. Now we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Nihilac Oxide and we're going to add some verdigris to the bits that we painted initially with the model air rust, so those kind of brassy bronze colours. You just want to be trying to put it in the areas which are probably not going to be brushed or rubbed at any point. That's probably where you're going to get more of the verdigree built up. Then once you've finished with the Hillac Oxide, you can then move on to a little bit of Citadel Typhus Corrosion. I'm using this to add the texture to the areas that I want to have really rusty. I'm using a really old medium layer brush to apply this because it does destroy brushes pretty well. You want to take care of your brushes as best you can and if that includes using an old brush to apply the Typhus Corrosion and that's all good. Now we're going to highlight that using a little bit of Citadel Riser Rust. When you're applying this you want to get some on the brush to the Citadel Dry Paint. Rub off some of the excess on a piece of paper or a bit of cloth or whatever. And then just lightly dry brush that over the areas where the Typhus Corrosion is. Now you do want to make sure that the typhus corrosion is fully dried because if you don't it will make a weird mix and not be too pleasant. But provided the typhus corrosion is dried, you just gently dry brush this over all those areas and over some of the edges and little bits where you just want to give a hint of orange as so it's starting to rust but not quite as bad as the rest. That'll be fine. Finally for the rust we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Fugan Orange. We're just going to put this over some of the areas that we've applied the rise of rust and the typhus corrosion too, and also just on some of the areas around that too, as though the rust colouring has run a little bit and gone to other areas. That just gives that a nice little look to it. I'll link up the video to how I paint rust. It's a quick and easy method, but it's a start to finish and shows you all the different areas. Now we're going to use some Citadel Lead Belcher. I'm just going to go across some of the edges on his sword and the sword blade and the angles just where if he stabbed it through someone or something it's going to have scraped off some of that rust. I'm going to do the same with the Icon of Despair as well and just pick out some of those edges. A few little bits just to get a little bit of a shine on certain areas. Now we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Carobeg Crimson. I'm going to use this to add some blood runs from the areas where the tentacles are coming out of his armour and the, the bone spares are coming out of his armour as that's broken through the skin. We're also going to be adding some of this to the cloth, his loincloth behind him there because where that tentacle is coming out of his stomach, if that's leaking blood and what have you, you're going to have it running down his leg and also soaking into that cloth just beneath it. So you can add a few little runs of crimson from all these parts where things are bursting out from him. Now we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Blood for the Blood God just to finish it off and get some fresh blood on there.
with that done, that is Classicus finished. It's the finished miniature. I'm really happy with how he turned out. It's another great Death Guard miniature. And an excellent one to add to your collection if you can get hold of him. That's another Plague Marine in the bag. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you have, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content. Also, think about subscribing to some of our other social media linked below. Thanks very much. If you like the channel and you enjoy the content and you'd like to support us, our coffee and Patreon pages are linked below. Thanks very much.